Hello friends. Today in this video we will discuss another web service method through which we can extract data that is SOAP web service. So stay tuned to watch the whole video till the end so that you don't miss out on any of the steps that we will be covering during this entire video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the notification icon to stay updated on the latest videos. So without any further delay let us start our discussion for today. First of all we will discuss what is SOAP web service. It is a web service that complies to SOAP web services specifications that is defined by W3C also known as World Wide Web Consortium is called ASOAP web service. So moving on to the next thing that we will discuss is the SOAP web services specifications. It is classified into two categories that is basic and extended. In basic it covers three areas such as SOAP, WSDL and UDDI. So we will cover this, all these three in, in, de, in detail in the later stage. In the extended mode it covers th following areas such as WS security, WS policy, WSI, WSBPL. So we will discuss the basic category in detail to be used in A2019 automation anywhere. So now moving on to first category of basic is the SOAP which stands for simple object access protocol. It defines how the two applications will be communicating with each other over the web. It, stand, it also defines how to exchange the information that occurs in an XML format. XML message must have the SOAP structure. Let us understand the concept of SOAP with the help of a simple diagram. Suppose a client or the user who want to consume the web service of the service provider will send in the request to the server or the service provider which is providing the service. So the service provider will respond will respond back with the required information to the consumer who is consuming that web service. So this is how the applications or the communication occur between the client and the server. So moving on to the next thing that is we will discuss the SOAP message. The XML document consists of the following elements. One is the envelope which defines the start and the end of the message. The body which contains the XML data comprising of the message that is being sent. Third is the header which contains an optional attributes of the message. Last but not the least we have the fault which provides the information about errors that occur while processing the message. So now let us understand the concept of SOAP message with the help of a diagram or a small example. So as you can see in the angular bracket we have the SOAP envelope XML NS. So this is called the SOAP envelope element. Then we have the SOAP body which defines the SOAP body, body element and what we need to send so this SOAP body consists of the message or the data that message or the data that is being sent over the web service to the service provider. Third is the name of the web service that we are using. This is the name of the web service we are using. Last but not the least we have the parameters that is being required. If we, if we have any parameters so we can pass in the parameters over here that is being required by the web service to be used. So moving on to the next basic category we have the WSDL 
which stands for web service description language the xml format that is used for describing web services contains functionalities parameters and the return type the last category that we will discuss is the uddi the web service provider publishes the web service through wsdl on an online directory from where consumers can query and search the web service this online directory is known as universal description discovery and integration so now we will be discussing about the functionality of soap web service that is we will now see how the soap web service works using automation anywhere a 2019 community edition so search for the soap web service in the search action and hit enter and then drag and drop the soap web service so in the soap web service properties we need to connect the uri to the wsdl file so we will first use the wsdl file that is this one so just add wsdl over here and copy this uri and paste it over here now we will use the service of the wsdl so to use the service go to the wsdl file and search for the service over here so this is the service name that we will be using so copy this service name that is calculator and now we will use the port so the port name also we will be using this one since it is using this port name so copy and paste the port name and paste it in the port field in the soap version you can select either 1.1 or 1.2 so i am using 1.1 as the version and in the operation suppose we need to multiply the multiply two numbers so you need to draw up a little bit in this wsdl file and as you can see the operation name over here is suppose if we want to multiply two elements or two numbers so search for the operation so this is the operation name to multiply two numbers so copy and paste the operation name and paste it in the operation name field in the parameter detail you can add the parameters to multiply two numbers so you can give as int a then click on add and then in the second parameter again give as int b and then click on add just added this over here give as int b and and in the authentication mode select no authentication if there is no authentication required to verify or log in into your wsdl file otherwise select the authentication mode as basic so the client and the custom headers are optional whether you want to give or not it depends upon your requirement first of all we will use the output settings we will save the response of the wsdl file in the xml file 
so select the XML file so before that we will be creating the XML file over the desktop or the over the desktop location so create the XML file by clicking right clicking on the desktop and then use the text document open this text file go to file save as select the desktop location and give the file name as soap web service message dot xml and in the save as type select as all files and then click on save so now we will be browsing the xml file location so go to the desktop and select soap web service message file name and then click on open in the response scope first we will see using the complete response and in the assign the output to a variable create a variable of type string so we are creating multiply numbers as the variable and then click on create and select and now click on save so now we will run the bot so before running the bot we have added one more command that is message bots to see the output what it what it generates so now we will run the bot again so it will the bot will be deployed on the system once you click on run button and it will then download the dependencies and the output and the bot will be shown over here once the bot runs so see as you can see the bot has given the response that is the whole xml response from that website and since we use the multiply operation the result of the multiplication is 800 now click on close the bot has run successfully now we will go to the xml file that we used that we saved over the desktop location so we will open it in the either the chrome or the internet explorer so select internet explorer and then click on ok so as you can see the response of the soap web service multiply operation is shown over here and the result is 800 being displayed since we passed in the values as 20 and 40 in the parameters so now we will see how to get the response that is the selected response from the WSDL file located at the online directory so for that we need to use the xpath expression so first of all we will see how to use the xpath expression the xpath expression is basically used to locate an element within an xml file so this is the XML, this is the response that that is present over the wsdl file so first of all we will see the response on the website so go to the multiply operation and as you can see this is the response that we have for the multiply operation so copy this response and paste it in the notepad file and now we will see how to write the xpath expression so we will use the double slash then we will give the star and then the local name and the response since we need to get this value so which is present inside this multiply result angular brackets 
so in the local name bread within brackets and then equal to we will pass in the multiply result so this is the edge path expression that we have for this so we will copy this and go to the automation anywhere from a bot and paste this edge path over here in the select xml output since we need to get the value so we will select the values if we need to select the inner xml or the outer xml so we will select the inner xml or outer xml depending upon the requirement so for the time being i am selecting the values as the option then click on save and now we will run the bot again to check the output so as we can see instead of complete response we have got the selected response that is the value and now we will close the message bots and the bot has run successfully so again we will open the xml file located at the desktop location to see whether there is any change in the output response that we have so it is the same because this was the of that of complete response that we used as the first option so this is how we can use the soap web service to extract the data from the website using the wsdl file so in today's video we discussed about the soap web services soap web service categories soap message and soap message format and then we discussed about the WSDL and UDDI and how both these are used in conjunction with SOAP web service. Please watch this video till the end and if you like this video then do please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share among others so that they can get the benefit out of this video. If you have any queries then please raise your queries and I will be more than happy to answer your queries. Till then have a great day.